We had over a thousand comments on our last video when most of those comments wanted an update on how Morel is doing. As you guys all know, our last video was about a horrible accident that we had that turned out okay, but it was a little bit worse than we thought. You see, Morel's in surgery today. He wants to thank everybody for their prayers. If you can say, keep Morel and his wife, his family in your prayers for the next few days, we will continue to update the RV Odd Squad through, a, through an email list and on our social media. But we just basically wanted to show you how to properly detach an RV. As you can see, the RV is behind me, still in the same location it was when Morel came to drop it off. And I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna turn the camera around at this point and Mercedes is gonna follow me around. I'm gonna properly detach this and I'm gonna make some pointers to you guys um, that will help and may even save a life. And so if you can share this video, comment, say a quick prayer for Morel and his family below, please do that. And uh, I hope share this video with other people. It's so important um, that you, when you're attaching and detaching your RV, that you do it properly. And so to start off, when you get your RV to your location, right, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be great. You're going to find your location. You're going to place the RV where you want it, right near your water, your sewer, your electricity. Once you do that, I never let Mercedes, the baby, and Skippy out of the truck until I'm fully detached. I like to do everything by myself. One of the first mistakes that I made with Morel was all three of us were excited to get our rig back. We come out of the house to say, you know, hey, how you doing? Oh, we're so excited to have Piper back. We should have said hello and done two things. Big Truck, Big RV had a great comment. And that comment was, if I've driven a long time, sometimes it's better to have a bite to eat or take a 20, 25 minute break. We could have invited Morel in for a drink, you know, sit down for a minute, get to know him. Not and, an alcoholic and one. Not, <laughs> not an alcoholic one. Yeah, but, some water. <laughs> but just sit him down and get to know him a little bit and yeah. see what the plan is. Morel, do you want my help yeah. or do you want us to stay in this house until you finish? Yeah. My guess is that if we had left Morel alone, this whole thing would have went fine. He's a professional, knows what he was doing. Our best guess is, is that he was on the road for 12 to 14 hours overnight and he was tired. So that's our first pointer. Um, leave everybody in the truck, your dogs, your pets. One person should do this unless you are a team that works together and you're used to the routine, okay? So Mercedes and uh, Sage are in the truck. I get out, I've got, the loc I've got the RV located where I want to, and now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I go ahead and detach this safely and point some things out to you. All right, guys, so I'm standing in front of my truck, right? Mercedes, the baby, and Skippy are in the truck. I've got the RV located right where I want it so that I can get my major hookups done. Now it's time for me to detach and no one is going to go near me or talk to me. If somebody comes up to me to say, hey, RVR couple, you know, we've seen your YouTube channel. I say, hey, we'd love get to get away from here. here. Get the hell away from me. <laughs> Until I have completely secured my RV and got my family safe. We're, it's, we're tired, but I'd love to talk to you, but it's going to be later. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, where we had our um, Morel park the RV, there's a huge, this is about a 5% slope here. Guys, this is heavy. Yeah. If Morel had not dropped his gate down, this rig would have rolled to the bottom of that hill and probably gone into the pool because it's about a 5 or a 6%. It would have been in the canyon. It would have been in the canyon. <laughs> so if you come over here and follow me, I'm going to show a couple things that you don't want to do. So here's my fifth wheel pin right here, right down in there. One of the things that you never want to do is never put your hands under this part of the rig, ever. Even when I'm jumping up in the back of my rig and I'm not detaching, I'm reaching in to get something, I will literally get up inside the back of the RV and not go underneath there. So climb around and do this, okay? This is where I want to be. I don't want to be reaching under anything because it's mechanical. Mechanical stuff can fail. Hmm. So never, ever, ever go under the danger points where you've got seven tons sitting above something solid like a truck, okay? How so do the, you open the gate though without getting under well, there? Well, I'm gonna show you, ready? Oh, okay. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do once my RV is where I want it is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna chalk the tires. Don't use these guys. These two, everybody's seen these. They're junk. If you have a small pull behind or, you know. Like a class B? Like a class B something. Well, I would just go ahead and spend some money on some good chalks. I went ahead and made my own chalks out of 8 by 8s 4 by 4s Those are some manly looking chalks. 10 by 10s I put handles on my them so they don't rot too fast. But I'm going to go ahead and chalk my wheels.
Now guys, you can chalk both sides of your wheels if you want to. I know I'm on a steep grade, mm. okay? If you want to, you can throw one in the front. But it's not gonna go forward, because it's- It's not gonna a, go forward, yeah. guys. But if you wanna be safe, you can always chalk all sides if you want to. If you're in a flat area, that would be different. Over here. All right. But there's no way with this incline. Walk more slowly. I'm a slow poke. John's like, I don't have a half speed. All right. Now I do go in there, mm -hmm. but I never again put my hands over the back of the RV. Okay? Oh, so the better the so truck is if like- If I'm gonna go through that area, which is not a safe place to be, especially if you're out in traffic, guys, yeah. you're on the side of the highway, you're at a rest stop. Mm. You don't wanna be playing around there because somebody could come in and hit you from behind Ooh. and you're in a bad, bad spot, okay? <clears throat> You gotta warn me when you're gonna walk so fast. All right, so the next thing I need to do is make sure, to remember to myself, is my <clears throat> truck have its emergency brake on? And it does. I'm all set. So now that I'm blocked, again, Mercedes, the baby, and Skip here in the back of the truck in a safe place, not running around here. Not in there, people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go to my landing gear. Now, most people, some RVs have manual landing gear, which can be good because mm -hmm. when you have um, uh, hydraulic landing gear or electric landing gear, things can go wrong. And that's one of the things that happened on this day is our batteries were dead. And so they're fully charged now. But if you cannot drop your landing gear, you're done. Yeah. This is, this is safe. It's yeah. not going anywhere. Even at this point, I could take Mercedes, the baby and the dog into the RV. It's not quite level, but it's safe, mm. okay? So as soon as the landing gear doesn't work, everything stops because this is the order it goes into. The proper order to do this is chalk your wheels, lift your RV, not completely, just get the weight of the RV off the truck. You don't want to lift the rear end of the truck before you detach or drop your landing gear, get the truck just enough so that there's a little bit of space there. There's no weight left in the truck. Then you're ready to go to the next step. If your battery isn't working, just double check your battery shut off. Mm. Okay, our battery shut off is back here. Right here, the battery disconnect. Okay. okay. Um, I checked this, it was off, but our landing gear works when this is off. Mm. Cause that was one of the things that popped into my head. Not a thousand comments we got, nobody caught that one. Mm. But this was off, but it's my battery disconnect. That keeps my battery from drawing any power when I'm not using it for mm. a while, okay? And that's what I thought it might've been, but when you come up here, I still have power, got okay? It. Battery disconnects are wired in all types of different ways. Mm. Okay, so check. Make sure you know where your bat battery disconnect is and see mm. what happens if you shut it off. Will your landing gear still work? Mm. If it doesn't, then you know to go ahead and grab that. A rear view is different. All right, so this is the Lippert leveler. And um, every, Lippert makes all different types of these, so they're all a little different. Our first RV was a Lippert, but the control board was different. So mm. you get used to your, your landing gear. Right now, I'm ready to drop my front. Get down there. Down. Down. What? What so what I'm here? doing at this point, stay right here, babe, stay oh. right here. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing at this point is I'm looking for my tongue to just barely lift up the back of the truck. So I'll start to see this coming oh, up. Oh yeah, it's coming up. And then I'll see a little bit of a gap right there, right? All the weight of my truck is now off my fifth wheel hitch, okay? Mm -hmm. It's still connected. That's so barely no danger, okay? That's barely a gap. Right. So you see, I'm still locked, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's the weight's off. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna release before I open my gate. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. In the past, I've always dropped my gate right away, so I don't forget to drop my gate before I drop my truck away. But if anything went wrong at this point, and for some reason my chocks fail. The back of the truck will stop this from rolling it mm -hmm. away. And that's kind of what stopped. That saved the day last that's, time. That's, that's what saved the day. And as a matter of fact, if you look inside here, oh, yeah. you can see that's the only damage that the RV took is that box right there. It could completely smashed up, okay? So my suggestion is don't drop your gate because your gate could still be a backup safety measure. Again, that's not how I do it. But after what I just saw happen, and try to remember this, S-O-S, -S, safety over speed, mm. right? Don't flip it, 
Speed over safety. <laughs> Always go slow. Safety over speed, guys. And mm. so slow down. Always go slow when you're doing any of this stuff. If you need to take a break, take a break. But even try to you know, control your breathing and slow yourself down. I sweat when I do anything. I don't have a half speed. This is a big one for you. It you're you're speaking personally. <laughs> so what I'm going to do again, when I go to, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to reach over the back. I'm not going underneath here. I'm going to pull my pin. I'm going to take off my braking device, which is right here. Now, if the gate was down, okay? Okay. And I did release this, and this was still connected. When this pulls out, it is supposed to hit the brakes on the RV. Here's the deal. If you, if you have, leave this in the comments for me, you guys. I tried to find the answer to this earlier today. If this rolls back and my batteries are dead and my emergency brake pops so that the brakes pop on the RV, will that be it, sufficient? Will that be sufficient? Will hmm. the brakes come on if there's no battery power? Oh, or, or won't it, right. And so I was thinking one of the things we could have done real quick or what I was trying to figure out what Morel was thinking when he reached in there. Oh, maybe he was reaching he was going for that for the brake to pull this. Oh. Right to stop the RV because if this is this is your emergency brake release, this gets pulled out. The brakes in the RV is supposed to go on. My question is, if the battery's dead, will that activate? Will it work? So mm. leave it in the comments if you know the questions that, or help me find the answer yeah. and give it to everybody else. One of the things we love about the RV Odd Squad, things mm. we don't know, we learn from the comments. And the comments have help other people too. Yep. So one of the things I'm going to do here is I don't want this to get hung up on anything, right? So I'm just going to go up here again, and I'm going to tuck this. Again, I'm not going to go between here. I'm going underneath here. I'm just tucking this out of the way so it doesn't get hung up on anything. Now I'm ready to pull it in. I'm going to start to release. Mm. And I am loose, okay? That's kind of scary. Okay, now I am completely away. Again, if you look back at my RV, you can see that this thing is like this. Yeah. But I got my wheels chalked, my landing gears down on the ground. Now it's okay to pull away. Hmm. When I go underneath to drop my gate, I'm going to stay low. If anything goes wrong, I know I can get out of here quick. Right. Drop my gate like that. Get out hmm. of the way. Okay? Hmm. Next thing I need to do is remove, I call it an umbilical cord. Some people call it a five-way, a three-way, a seven-way. It's going to be, again, stay low. Reach around the corner. Hold on. Remove this. Make sure it's clear. We're not going to oh, get hooked up electric, on anything. The electric. And again, if you guys look up under here, that's what got crushed when it hit Morel's back gate. Could have been so much worse. Okay. I am now detached from my truck. I am ready to drive away. I make sure everything's clear. I can walk back and double check my chalks. Yeah. Now I'm going to just drive away from this. So as I'm pulling away from this, I'm looking in my rearview mirror or I'm looking at the hitch to make sure I am released. Mm. Okay? And taking a peek at everything back there, making sure nothing's in the way. Okay? Copy that. So I just get out of the truck, right? I am completely away from there. Mercedes in there complaining to slow down and hurry up so that she can get inside the RV. She has things to do. Sage is crying, right? She wants to get out of the truck, but they can't get out of the truck yet. And the reason why is this rig is still not vulnerable. Ready. Still yeah. very vulnerable because I got a steep grade. So now what I'm gonna do, go back to my leveling system, turn it on. I'm gonna retract my fronts and I'm gonna drop this down. And how low do you go? What I do is I go, I guess at what the low is. On this hill, there's so much of a steep grade here. Wow. I'm gonna drop it all the way down. Now I'm gonna go to manual, okay? Which is, I scroll through. Right here, if you scroll through, right now it's telling me I'm a, I'm a half inch front to rear. Okay? That's so not that bad. That's not too bad. That's, well, 0.6, it's about a half inch. It's in actually pretty good shape. If I go back this way, it's gonna be, I'm only, what, a quarter of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch side to side. So right now I'm in great shape. You can also hit auto level, which will start a process of the system leveling this for yourself. 
I like my rig as low to the ground as I can possibly mm -hmm. get it. Um, if there's no choice for me, um, and I do have to be high off the ground, I will go ahead and use my blocks under my landing gear. Because remember, the more my landing gear is extended, the more wobble is going to be in the RV. Mm -hmm. To put blocks under my landing gear, because I'm on a steep grade, it keeps that wobble out of the RV. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cool. I am safe. The rig is secure. Everything's good. It's time to go and get Mercedes the baby and Skippy out of the truck, get inside and, you know, go see the scenes that are wherever we are when we do this. Make um, me some steak. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, guys. That's how you properly, properly, um, you know, detach your truck in a safe manner. Follow those rules. And again, always go slow, right? Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't get distracted by anybody that's coming to say hello. Even a friendly neighbor just said, I'd love to talk to you, but I really have a lot to do before I, you know, I got I to gotta get this stuff done in a safe way and then I'd be happy to talk to you. So um, we kept in touch with Morel every single day since this happened, what, four days ago now. Yeah. Um, just updates on him. A little bit more damage to his hand than we originally thought. He's in surgery right now. Yeah. So leave him a prayer below. Um, leave his family a prayer below. And, you know, do you, did I make any mistakes? I'm always open-minded where I might have made a mistake. So, again, leave a comment below. Most importantly, share this video. If you guys didn't recognize, this is the last video we did was the longest video we've ever done. Did, we've ever yeah. done because we wanted to show the whole process so you could see all the mistakes that were made on everybody's part. This is not to blame anybody. No, no, no. Everybody can always do better. Mm -hmm. One last thing: the most comments we got from the thousand comments we received is is that all of us should be getting CPR training and certification. We actually planned on the whole team getting that before we open later this spring. Mm -hmm. That has moved to the top of the list now. Um, we've got a safety committee that, that has been put together. We've already started making appointments with the local fire department. Because we're so far away from a hospital, it was suggested that we have a helicopter landing pad. And we've got three locations where we can clear an area for a helicopter, an emergency helicopter to come in here to land. Just put up a wind speed thing, you know, one of those orange things that sticks. Like the socks. Yeah, it's like a wind sock, whatever they call it. My buddy Mark would know what that is. Yeah. And then give the GPS coordinates to all the emergency responders in the area so that if there ever is an emergency with one of our friends or family or loved ones, um, we can get a helicopter here if it, you know, it's going to take longer than 45 minutes to transport them to a local hospital. So thank you so much for the comments. They were super helpful. We all learned something from it. And don't forget to say a prayer for uh, Morel tonight. We, it's 2022 and we start our newbie classes beginning this Saturday. Hello, class. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, School is back in session. School's back in session, <laughs> and we're super excited for 2022. As you guys know, we're, we're hoping to start a newbie class here at Thunder Canyon for people that are interested in getting into mm -hmm. the RV lifestyle, where mm -hmm. they can fly in before they get an RV, and we can show them all the mistakes we made and what they can do better to avoid those frustrations that we had. So mm -hmm. we'll see you on Saturday. This is my new friend here. <laughs> this is Johnny <laughs> right now. <laughs> For these. <laughs> this is what I had to do to get a new free. <laughs> and I thought I was going to pick that up. Look at the size of this guy. Oh, my goodness. I wish I could. I got to tell you the story one day. John one day. I tried to pick up an RV. <laughs> hey, but I tried. He tried. I give him that. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Oh, we love having you, man. It. Look forward to seeing it. you again. Absolutely. And we'll meeting be your wife. We'll yeah. be back, and I'll be back, you know, to enjoy, not to do no work. Yeah. Yes, sit around a campfire.